In this video, we're going to go over version 2.0 of my PowerWire spreadsheet. Version 1.0 was released back in probably November, and I had a ton of positive feedback on that video. Y'all enjoyed it a whole lot, and I had a lot of questions. A lot of people said, hey, can you add this? Hey, can you add that? And I said, well, yeah, I can add all that. And I've been working to update the spreadsheet and add some new things to it. Now, back for version 1.0, I just showed you how to use the calculator. Today, I'm gonna to go through the entire spreadsheet and show you all kind of interesting things that you need to know about your car audio's main power wire. So let's pop over to the spreadsheet and let's get started. Okay, here's the first thing that you need to see. This right here is the foundation for all of our calculations. What you have to remember is that power wire has an internal resistance and that internal resistance is a function of how long the power wire is and the cross-sectional area of the power wire. Longer wire means warm resistance, thicker wire means less resistance. And I've got here on the screen several different sizes of wire in two different types. And this is one of the big changes to version 2.0 versus version 1.0. Version 1.0 only showed you zero gauge, four gauge, and eight gauge wire. And I've broken it down, show you more different sizes of wires. The first thing I wanna point out to you is this thing right here, circular mills. What in the world is a circular mill? Well, the first thing you've gotta know is that's not a metric number. That's actually a good old standard English imperial system. A mill is one thousandth of an inch. It's not a millimeter, it's a thousandth of an inch. And a circular mill is basically a circle that would fit in a, in a square that is one thousandth of an inch across. So it's a measure of a, the cross-sectional area of a circle. So it's a way to measure the area of a circle. What you're going to notice from the spreadsheet is as the wire gauge gets smaller, as we get to a smaller number, the circular mills increases. So bigger wire is associated with a smaller wire gauge number. And here we have everything from eight gauge all the way down to quadruple zero gauge. The other thing to notice is that as the wire gets bigger, the resistance per 1000 feet gets smaller. So bigger wire, less resistance over a given length of wire. The other thing I want to point out to you is the difference in the resistance between the oxygen-free copper and the copper-clad aluminum, the CCA wire. Now, in this example, I'm using 15% copper CCA. There's also 10% copper CCA, which is going to have more resistance because copper has less resistance than aluminum. So there's a number here called specific resistivity, and that's a way of measuring the amount of resistance that's in the different types of metal. And another number there called circular mills per amp. This is going along with the guidelines from Basic Car Audio and Electronics website saying that you need at least 300 circular mills for every amp of current that you're going to pass down that wire. I wasn't able to find a number to go with the CCA. That, that 300 circular mills was for oxygen-free copper. And so I just said, well, you know what? The specific resistivity uh, is higher. It's 55% more in the CCA wire. So I just increased that number by 55% to get an approximation of the cross-section of that CCA wire per amp, the circular mills per amp. Everything else, you see the references up on the screen. When you get your hands on the spreadsheets, you can just click on those websites, go right to them, and you can see where I got the information. One thing that I always like to point out, people sometimes will ask about a thing called the skin effect. Well, the skin effect only happens with AC current. We're dealing with DC current. That main power wire running back to your amplifiers is going to be running DC current. Speaking about current, let's learn a little bit about how current draw works. So we're going to pop over to the current draw tab. So what I've got here is a little table that compares power versus voltage. And the, the inner part of that table there tells us the amperage draw. So if we have, for example, 200 watts of power and 12 volts, we're going to draw 26 amps for an amplifier efficiency that's 65%. So you can go in on your own when you get yourself a copy of this spreadsheet and you can change that amplifier efficiency to match your amplifier to get a better idea of how it's going to work in your actual vehicle. And the thing to notice is as the power draw goes up, the current draw goes up. So if you're doing 3000 watts at 12 volts, that's going to take 385 amps of current. The other thing to notice is that as you go over to the right for a given amount of power, as your voltage goes up, you're going to draw fewer amps of current. Take a look at the 200 watt example. 
if you have a, a 12 volt power supply, it's going to take 26 amps in order to, to produce 200 watts of power. If you've got a 14.4 volt power supply, you need 21 amps to produce 200 watts of power. And this is something that's really important. And if you start talking to people who compete in car audio SPL competitions, they like to run 14.4 volt batteries and they like to run alternators that have the have the alternator regulator cranked up so that the regulator will put out 16 volts so they can top off those 14.4 volt batteries. And they do that because you can just simply push more current down your power wire when you have a higher voltage. And what's important for the average person in their daily driver is to understand that you need to have a strong enough electrical system to support the power you want to run. Typically what we see in a car is that when the car is on and the alternator is providing power, you're going to get over 14 volts, typically around 14.4. But if the car is off and you're just pulling power from the battery, you're going to be running at around 12 volts. A good happy medium is 13.8 because the alternator is not always making full power whenever the car is running. And this just highlights the importance of having a strong electrical system if you're going to have a powerful aftermarket stereo in your car. If you've got voltage drop, you're going to have power drop. And just to visualize it, I've included this graph. And we can really see that as the power starts to crank up, once you get up to a 3000 watt system, there is a, a big difference in the amount of current that you have to draw to produce 3000 watts at 12 volts versus 14.4 volts. So that's an important thing to consider. The amount of current you're going to draw is a function of the voltage that you're maintaining and the, and the wattage you're trying to put out. And of course, the amplifier efficiency is very important as well. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go in and change the amplifier efficiency. Let's imagine you've got a really nice, efficient amp. It's something like maybe an audio control that we know we've seen, you know, uh, Derek at Williston Audio Labs test, and you know for sure it's got great efficiency numbers. And you can see that you need less amperage to hit the same wattage whenever the amp gets more efficient. So a nice efficient class D amplifier is sometimes a real good idea, especially if your electrical system is not up to task. So that's really the first thing. We really have to understand what kind of current draw we're going to have. And if we know what our current draw is going to be like, that means we have a better understanding of what kind of power wire we need to use. So understanding our current draw is always the first place that we start. And you've got a nice table right here. You can go in and change the amplifier efficiency and use this as a reference to get an idea about what's going on. Now I'm going to give you instructions in the description below so you can figure out how to get your hands on the spreadsheet or you can just hit pause and you can just maybe take a screenshot of this and you can use this right here as your tool for figuring it out. Let's pop over to the next tab on the spreadsheet. Now on this spreadsheet tab, I'm demonstrating voltage drop and power loss so that you can get an idea about how much power you're going to lose if you're trying to jam too much current down a wire that's too small. So the basic setup here is anything in gray is something you can change to fit your own situation. So if you know you have a 20 foot power wire and the way I always think about it, let's say I've got 18 feet going from the battery to my single amplifier or 18 feet going to a distribution block and then onto other amplifiers. I'm just looking at that one wire and then I'm going to throw two more feet in there because I've got to run a ground wire from the amplifier or the distribution block into the ground. So that's where I'm coming with that 20 foot number. I'm counting the length of the ground wire, the main ground wire while I'm doing it as well. And let's say hypothetically you're running a four gauge wire and let's take a look at what happens whenever you're drawing 50 amps of current. So if you're drawing 50 amps of current, you're going to lose a quarter of a volt across the length of that 20 feet of power and ground wire if you're using oxygen free copper and you're going to lose 0.39 volts if you're using CCA. And then if you have a 70% efficient amplifier, you're going to burn 18 watts of power if you're using oxygen free copper. But if you use CCA, you're going to burn 28 watts of power in that scenario. So you can see that you can gain 10 watts of power just by using the higher quality wire. Now the other thing to remember is over here the circular mills per amp. Our rule of thumb is for copper we want 300 circular mills per amp and for CCA we want 465 circular mills per amp. So we can use this table right here to know if our four gauge wire is going to be big enough for the current that we want to draw. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. 
Let's imagine that we knew we wanted to draw 100 amps of current. If you do that with 20 feet of 4 gauge wire, you're going to be right at 0.5 volts of voltage drop. You're losing right at half a volt with oxygen free copper. So you're right on the borderline. But if you use CCA, you're going to lose 0.77 volts. That's more than the half of a volt threshold we want to stay under. And take a look at what happens to your power. You're going to lose 70 watts of power as a result of amplifier inefficiencies and the wire burning off energy as heat, but you're going to lose an extra 39 watts of power if you're using CCA. That's going to be an audible difference. Now look at the circular mills. The CCA just doesn't have enough circular mills per amp to carry that current. And here's what's going to happen. The wire is going to start to heat up. And that's bad news for several reasons. First of all, hot wire starts a fire. You don't want that, okay? The second reason is, as the wire heats up, the resistance in the wire increases. These resistance numbers we're working off of are resistance at room temperature. When you start to heat the wire up, you end up in this vicious circle where you get more resistance, which causes the wire to heat up more, which causes more resistance. You don't want to go there. That's bad news. So that's one reason why people tend to recommend the OFC wire over the CCA wire. The OFC is a superior wire because the copper has less internal resistance than the aluminum. And you can now take this, play with it all you want on your own. I like this little chart that I made right here that shows the power loss in watts. Okay, this is how much power you're going to lose in watts with the two different types of wire. The important thing to remember is you are going to lose some power. Amplifiers are not 100% efficient. It's physically impossible for them to, to be 100% efficient. They're going to burn off some energy as heat. And as the wire heats up due to resistance, it's going to burn off energy as heat. Look at the huge gap between these two wires. If you're going to be drawing a lot of current, you're going to end up burning off a huge amount of power, and you don't want that. In this example right here, if you're drawing 300 amps of current through that wire, you're going to be burning, heck, almost 400 watts of power that could have gone to your amplifier and could have been making music. So that's why it's important to use the right kind of wire. Now let's use a more realistic example here. If we are going to be running 300 amps of current, we're not going to be using 4 gauge wire on a 20 foot run. We're probably going to be running a much shorter run and we're probably going to be running a much thicker wire. And we see here that if you are drawing 300 amps and what we see here is that if you have a short run of wire and you're pulling 300 amps through that short run of zero gauge wire, it doesn't matter if you're using OFC or CCA. Both of them are below the one half of a volt threshold. And if you look at the power loss, both of them lose some power. You're going to lose about 70 more watts with the copper clad aluminum. So it is inferior. You are going to get more power if you use the OFC. But look right over here at the circular mills. Okay. You're over the threshold for the OFC, but not for the CCA. You don't have a thick enough wire to run that kind of power through the CCA. You don't have the cross section that you need. So that's not going to work. If you're running a high power system, you got to skip that CCA wire and make sure you're getting OFC wire. Now me personally, I like an OFC wire that's been tinned. That way it's less corrosive and it will last longer in your car. That is definitely a better solution. And what you're going to see is a lot of car audio power wire is a little bit oversized. So an oversized zero gauge wire that's copper that's been tinned is probably the best thing you're going to find. Now that brings you to the tab where I show you the power wire calculator. So all you've got to do is take your particular situation and plug it into this spreadsheet and you'll be off and running. You'll be able to figure out what size power wire you need to use just by playing around with this calculator. So why don't we jump in here real quick and play around with the calculator some. So let's just say hypothetically that I've got a 1200 watt RMS amplifier. I've got 13.8 volts in my car and my amplifier is 70% efficient. So that's what you might expect for a class D amplifier. A good quality one's going to be nice and efficient like that. In that scenario, I'm going to draw 124.2 amps of current. That means if I use a fuse that's smaller than 124.2 amps, I've got a real good chance of blowing my fuse. 
so I wouldn't put a 100 amp fuse in this scenario. Now, as far as picking your fuse goes, you wanna make sure that your fuse is sized in order to protect the wire. That's real important. So you, you wanna make sure you've got a wire that can handle all 124 amps and you wanna get your fuse as, as close to 124 amps as possible. Honestly, 120 amp fuse will probably do the trick. You might have to go with 150. Now let's say that I have uh, 19 feet of wire. So if the main power wire and the main ground wire together are 19 feet, that's what this is. And I use oxygen free copper and I use a two gauge wire. Now remember two gauge and double alt gauge are different, right? Cause we have two gauge here and we have double zero gauge here. These are different, double zero is much thicker. So if I'm going with two gauge, I see that I've got a voltage drop of 0.369 volts. So it's inside the tolerance for voltage drop and the circular mills per amp is 534. That's above 300, the magic number that we're looking for. Let's see what happens when we take that power wire and break it down to something smaller. Let's try four gauge wire. Well, when we try four gauge wire, we see we have plenty of circular mills, but our voltage drop is the problem. This is because we're running a pretty long length of wire. So if I could get my amplifier a little bit closer, if I had say 15 feet of wire, I could make this four gauge wire do the trick, right? So a four gauge wire will carry the current that I needed to carry in this scenario, but it's a four gauge oxygen free copper wire. Let's see what happens when we switch to CCA. Well, we got a problem. A four gauge CCA wire won't get the job done. And this is the reason why most people who are into car audio recommend that you stick with the copper wire and stay away from the CCA right here. It's just simply not big enough to get the job done. We would have to jump up to a bigger wire. So if we jumped up to a zero gauge wire, it's plenty big. So the CCA wire is acceptable. You just gotta make sure that you bump it up in size so that you can have a CCA wire that will handle the current draw that you need. Let's run some more examples. Let's say you have kind of a real entry level system. You got 500 Watts in a, in a small amplifier, maybe it's 65% efficient sitting still with the engine off, just running off a of battery power. You're going to need to pull 64.1 amps. What size wire can you get away with? Can you get away with an eight gauge wire? Let's say you're doing a 15 foot run. Let's see what 15 feet of eight gauge wire will do. Won't do the trick now, will it? but that's because we're using CCA wire. Let's see if we can switch to OFC and see if that'll help. Still not gonna do the trick. So a 500 watt system, you're not gonna get enough juice when you're sitting still in your car. You gotta have a little bigger wire. So let's bump up to a six, six gauge wire, see if that does the trick. There you go, that'll do the trick. And that's how you use the calculator. You just go in and tinker around with the numbers before you go and buy your power wire. And you really ought to do this before you go and buy your amplifier so you can get an idea of what it is you're going to need. And that, my friends, is the Power Wire version 2.0. Hope you liked my video. If you found this information useful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can catch the next video as well. I'm the DIY Audio Guy. Thank you for watching.